There's no sex in the manga. What? what? Yeah, there's absolutely nothing sexual in the manga. There is nudity, a little bit of drugs, and some talks of being intimate, but actual sex? Nope. By comparison, the manga is very tame towards Crybaby's explicit nature. This is just a taste of what's in store, so stay tuned with Devilman Crybaby, Top 10 Differences from the Classic Manga. In celebration for the long-awaited English release of the 1972 Devilman manga and the one-year anniversary for Devilman Crybaby, here's a list detailing some of the changes from the manga and anime. There's more than 10 differences between Yuasa Masaki's Crybaby and Go Nigai's Devilman, but here are the most essential. Another major change from the source material is the addition of sports track activities. The manga does not have Akira participate in any after-school clubs. In the beginning, Miki even asks Akira why hasn't he joined a sport, and he responds that I do have the build for it, but I don't like sports. However, the usage of track did exist in other Devilman material, being the live-action film from 2004. On the subject of tracks, another change comes from the character Miko, who's also in the sport and acts as part of the main cast. The same can be said for Murio Koda since he's not from the manga. He's an original character for the Crybaby anime. However, Miko does exist in the manga, but she appears towards the end of the story. In fact, her usage in the 1972 Devilman is for a completely different purpose. In Crybaby, she served to add another perspective in the transformation of a human to a Devilman who was jealous of Miki, but rediscovered her humanity and attempted to help mankind. In the manga, she plays the role of a victimized Devilman, therefore she's disgusted of her body, feels guilty of her past crimes as a shoplifter, and is experimented on by scientists. Miko first meets Devilman when she's rescued and is told, You're not a demon, we're Devilman. And that's the last we see of her. Miko's overall presence in the manga version is very minimal, but she does tend to appear in other works such as Devilman Grimoire and the OVA Amon Apocalypse of Devilman. Crybaby is thus far the only version where her demon transformation is that of a spider. A small easter egg of this manga interpretation of Miko is briefly shown in episode 10 of Crybaby, however, it's a completely different person. I suppose this was similar to the treatment of Natsuko from Re Cutie Honey, in which she was drastically remade into an expector instead of a schoolgirl, but her original design can still be seen used by another character. On the topic of character versions, Crybaby Miki is very different from her source material. Admittedly, there's not much to say about the 1972 manga version since her personality diminishes with every chapter. In her debut, Miki was shown to be assertive and willing to defend Akira from delinquents. But she also hated Akira's cowardly nature as he refused to stand up for himself and save her from said delinquents. But the moment Akira becomes Devilman, Miki transforms into a comical cheerleader. Her behavior has shown great intimate interest in Akira, so for the rest of the manga, she's just very silly while offering some jokes here and there. Some of her attitude returns by the end of the story, but it's too late by then. Since the 1970s, other Devilman material have altered Miki's character to have a more active role best shown via Devilman Grimoire and Devilman Crybaby. In the case of Crybaby, Mickey is more of a pure spirit who believes in the good of others, while in Grimoire, she's very hot-blooded and merged with a demon, making her the first Devilman in the Grimoire series. It's an obvious given that the setting is changed for the 2018 adaptation, as the shonen manga was made in the 1970s, or, according to some editions, the story takes place in 1980X. The point is, there was no such thing as smartphones, the internet, or even earphones. In Crybaby, we had Ryo exposing Koda going rampant on the competitors, which created the needed proof of demons are real and went viral. But that scene doesn't exist in the manga. With that in mind, how did people discover the existence of demons on a global scale? This leads to number 6 and the demon Xenon. Prior to his appearance, many demons started a suicide bombing against the human race via failed merging. These attacks were random but provoked fear on the humans which is then followed by a nuclear strike by the Soviet Union. The reasons for firing at their own country were to eliminate the Satana and this became worldwide news. Afterwards, the demon Xenon makes his grand entrance and it's a big deal. In contrast to Crybaby, the demon Xenon had a bigger part in the story, both figuratively and literally. Xenon is first name-dropped on page 417 of Classic Volume 1, 
but its gigantic debut would occur in Volume 2 as he declares war and can be seen all throughout the world simultaneously. I'm assuming Kentaro Miura and Berserk Frame reuse this scene in the form of the giant Kushan tree given their dramatic scale. While Xenon did manage to be in Crybaby, he is quite smaller than his manga counterpart. There's panels where he's clearly kaiju-sized, yet in Crybaby he's nowhere near that scale. Admittedly, I'm just happy Xenon showed up at all, since he only made a brief shot in the Demon Bird OVA, and a small role in the Gonagai World OVA. He was the main villain in the 1972 Toei Devilman, but he was just okay since Devilman never fought him. He also had a bigger role to play in the finale of Devilman Grimmore, but that's a different version of the character. In the manga, Devilman never fought Xenon and he could also transform into a dragon. Yeah, that's a thing. Furthermore, Xenon's role in Crybaby was taken away by Psycho Jenny, but that's something for a little later. The point is, in the manga, Xenon was the character who had the biggest impact of making humankind acknowledge the presence of demonkind. I believe most viewers were a bit upset that Akita's parents had very little screen time and barely got to know them before they got shell shot. The thing is, Akita's parents never appeared in the manga or at least in the very first release. Originally, they were just name-dropped and explaining why Akira has been living with the Makimuras. In the true Devilman novel by Go Nagai's brother, Yasutaka Nagai, Akira's parents made their debut while exploring the Himalayas for research and are killed by Jinmen. This would later appear in the Devilman OVAs, The Birth and The Demon Bird. And at some point, later editions of Devilman would add pages, including this scene, which showcases the parents. In fact, these are the only panels they appear in. In contrast, the 1990 Demon Bird OVA took a few steps further in having Akira accept the death of his mom and put her to rest from Jimin's control. But uh, what about his dad? I don't know, he doesn't appear at all. <laughs> no love for the father. So fast forward to 2018 and we get this scene where Jimin possessed Akira's father, Reijuro Fudo, and in turn devoured Kaori Fudo. And now Akira has to kill them both. The Crybaby anime actually added a lot more family material than the Demon Bird ever did and the same is said for just about every other Devilman manga. Crybaby is the version that went into the most detail for Akita's folks, as brief as it was. You want to know what happened in the original manga? Since the parents don't appear in the original manga, who did Jinmen possess? Well, the chapter begins with this girl named Sachiko, who rings the doorbell asking to play with Akita, and apparently they're friends, and I say apparently because we're almost at the halfway point of the story and this character is never mentioned before. She shows up at the Makimura house, has fun off panel, and then she leaves on the train to Busan, and then Jinmen shows up and proceeds to eat them. Jinmen gives a call to Akira to meet up at a park, and then the scene ensues with Akira having to kill Jinmen and Sachiko to set her soul free. And she's never mentioned ever again. And that's my biggest gripe with the original scene. It does add a lot of drama and it's a turning point for the story to become darker, but I always prefer the other iteration since having to kill your parents is a heart-wrenching event, more so when flashbacks of said family members still appear in later scenes. But if you wanted to see the original manga version of the Jinmen scene, you can watch the beginning of Cyborg 009 vs Devilman, which also includes the stylized manga silhouettes. I have a confession to make. Despite being a Devilman fan since 2014, I still don't know the names of these delinquents, at least not by heart, and this is a topic of number 4. The original delinquents of the manga were changed into trendy gangsters from the hood who like to rap and voiced by Japanese rap artists. At face value, yeah, it sounds kind of corny and something more expected from the 1990s, but for whatever reason, Crybaby decided to have freestyle raps. <laughs> Aside from the obvious surface, there are other differences, as in the Crybaby anime, they became Miki's friends, but in the manga, they ended up becoming Akira's friends. In Crybaby, Miki saved them from getting shot by the cops, and the main dude, Wamu, got the hots for her. But what happened in 1972? These guys initially were Akira's bullies who started the story, then got beaten up by Akira and later challenged him again, and then Akira makes one of my favorite faces, beats up the delinquents, only for them to be possessed by a spider demon, and then Akira frees them from the spider's control, and then they unite forces to free other people who are brainwashed by said demon named Rasper. And then it ends with Devilman killing Rasper. 
Because of this encounter, these fellows have become trustworthy friends of Akira, and in contrast to Crybaby Episode 9, they didn't rat him out. What I find interesting about these thugs is they seem to always have a redesign whenever they're in an anime series such as the OVA The Birth and the Cyborg 009 crossover. Maybe one day in 2022 we'll get a proper representation of these delinquents. Ah, uh, this may look a little silly in a retro sort of way as the 1972 manga also included demon hunters or demon busters as the English manga puts it, who wore these special uniforms to exterminate demons. To this edit date in 2019, they have not made an animated appearance aside from an easter egg in Mazinger Edition Z The Impact. Um, insert number here. The paranoia section of the Devilman manga is something that wasn't portrayed very well in the Crybaby version. This is where the differences hit the hardest and trying to explain everything would take up too much time and I feel I'd be robbing you the experience of reading it for yourself. But I will bring up that the original had a greater emphasis on science fiction while Crybaby leaned towards religious symbolism. A good example is the stoning scene, which was not in the manga, and the closest thing I found to that moment was in Devilman Grimoire Volume 4. The scientist Dr. Rai Numa is also omitted from the Crybaby adaptation, who basically escalated the tension of demons disguising as people, and this was verified via inhuman experimentation. The problems I had with Crybaby is... it wasn't subtle at all. <laughs> I recall the scene where Akira argues with Ryo and the elevator has 666 on it, and a Bible's just right there. It's just there. That's a little much, guys, don't you think? The manga version of these events were visually striking as the sense of dread creeps up on you, at least that's how I felt when reading it. The OVA, Apocalypse of Devilman, had a little bit of this doom feeling in his first few minutes but obviously felt too short when compared to the terror sensation of the manga. In summary, you really need to experience it for yourself. Heading to the final two are the most spoiler-heavy scenes of the series, starting with the Makimura family. So, if you made it this far, I'm assuming you already seen the show or read the manga, thus I'm going full throttle on spoilers. The deaths of the Makimura household are very different and I don't want to completely ruin your experience if you haven't read it. In Crybaby, Tare becomes a demon and Akiko Makimura tries to hide her little boy from getting killed. Ironically, her actions to save her family got herself eaten by Tare, who's caught in the act as Kozo Makimura sees this, contemplating whether to shoot his son and irony strikes again as he's the one who gets shot and they all die. That's the short version as episodes 7 through 9 have a lot more things happening alongside the Makimura deaths, and the same can be said for the manga version. The countdown to their deaths begins when Ryo exposes Akira as a demon, and the Makimuras help Akira escape from the demon busters. I'm still not used to saying that. This creates suspicion that the rest of the family are demons, so Miki's parents are arrested. Akira would later attempt to rescue them, but he arrives too late as they were tortured to death. Meanwhile, back at the house, the neighbors got scared of being killed by the Makimura children, believing them to be demons or witches, so they break into the house and murder them. The different sequence of events alter the deaths greatly with Miki being openly supportive of Devilman and Tare turning into a demon, but they still share the same experience to Akira who lost his faith in humanity, and both scenes conclude with sending the humans to Hellfire. As stated before, the surreal visuals are horrifyingly powerful in the manga, so I hope one day to see a Devilman anime that manages the same effect. At the very least, if you have the Discotheque Mia release of the Devilman OVAs, you can listen to the drama CD of the final Devilman OVA episode which covers these tragic events. Number 1 is a trio, Ryo Asuka's parents, the dreadful inheritance, and the warning to the reader. The 1972 Devilman manga is unlike shonen among its time. Something in that particular year was pretty generous for superhero-themed series such as Android Kikaider and Gacha Man, resulting in some gruesome stories hidden within its campy exteriors. The Devilman manga has this sense of dread that doesn't quite show its ugly head in anime format, at least not yet. Earlier, when speaking about the paranoia and tension, these remaining differences add to the ghastly tone. Ryo Asuka in the manga was a very passionate human who had good in him, while in Crybaby, Ryo Asuka was more of a straight-up villain from the start. While both characters debut with the bullying scene, Ryo Asuka brings more details surrounding the discovery of demons. This Ryo Asuka actually had a father who was researching the demons but got possessed, so he burned himself to keep his humanity. 
Meanwhile, in the Crybaby anime, this was swapped for a Russian scientist named Fikira. Another inclusion is a demon sculpture which served as the dreadful inheritance. By looking inside it, you can see the Earth's past when demons thrived. The events involving his father and this artifact can be found in the Devilman OVA titled The Birth. There's more differences involving Ryo Asuka as the story foreshadows his secrets, but these pages are missing from the English release of the Devilman Classic Collection as it's based on a different edition. Instead, the Classic Collection adds some bonus chapters which possibly gives too much away from the surprise revelation. Furthermore, adding to the mental panic of humanity, Ryo discovers that he's not really Ryo Asuka. What? The Ryo Ryo Asuka died in a car accident prior to the events of the story. The past about his father and the demon sculpture were all fabricated memories by Psycho Jenny. Since the original Ryo lacks a Ryo family, I assume this is why the scenarios were removed in the Crybaby version, and instead changed the character's origin as some sort of prophesized omen. But these manga-only scenes does convey an unsettling feeling when reading the story. Many panels demonstrate this with surreal imagery, silhouettes, and various expressions of anguish. But one of the unique details of the manga is Akira speaking to the reader. There's three pages in the Classic Collection Volume 2 which shows Akira warning the reader that you're now part of this story. These three pages claim that this fairy tale will affect you. You're not exempt from the hell that follows. While it's true that you can take something from this reading experience, whether you enjoyed it or not, it does stay true to its horror. For more information on these pages, you will have to read the Gekiman manga, which is a behind-the-scenes autobiography of the 1972 Devilman manga. While this scene doesn't appear in any Devilman anime, it is featured in another Gonagai work being Mazinger Edition Z, The Impact. The henchman, Baron Ashura, is the one giving this ominous message, as the ending of that anime is also one of tragedy. And that concludes the top 10 differences. There's various other pieces of details that I excluded involving Ryo Asuka as both characters are completely different from one another, and I'd rather save that material for a character profile as soon as Gekiman is completely translated or made available through official methods. I hope this video encourages you to read the classic manga as the foreboding sensation hasn't been replicated in animation. Devilman Crybaby did its job of name recognition and official Devilman licensing, but it's not the definitive Devilman that many fans wanted. Perhaps Devilman's 50th anniversary can be the date for a genuine anime adaptation that fully represents Gonagai's messages of anti-war. Until then, I'll continue to make Devilman videos when I can because I like doing them. I'm the Anime Hero and I review anime so you can enjoy it.